And we're talking about the simplicity of faith. Now let's open our Bibles tonight to the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. When they came nigh to Jerusalem under Bethany, Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and he said unto them, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you have entered it, you shall find a colt tied wherein never man sat. Loose him, bring him. If any man say unto you, why you do this, say ye that the Lord hath need of him and straightway he will send him here. They went their way and found the colt tied by the door. And uh, certain of them that stood there said, what are you doing to that colt? And they said, Jesus commanded, and they let him go. So they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. So now, blessed be the kingdom of our father David that come on the name of the Lord, Hosanna to the highest. Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. Now I want you to underline that right there. That's one of the things I wanted you to see. He entered into the temple. He entered into the temple. The man at the beautiful gate in Acts chapter three. He looked up expecting to receive something from them. Now, a man that had a reputation for to giving to the poor in the middle of the night you know, as well as I do, Jesus never did pass that man by without telling Judas to put something in his hand. Look through there and find they went into the temple. It's all over the book of Mark. They went into the temple. Every time these went through there, he put something in that man's hand. Why didn't he heal him? His father didn't say heal him. He said, I only do. I only say what I hear my father say. And I only do what I see my father do. Amen. Amen. Now that's, that comes from meditating the word and then searching around and finding these, these spots like that. And it's a lot of time. I won't go into all that, but I wanted to take you to that. <clears throat> In the morning when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off, Having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. Look, notice, yet is in italics. Now, in the classic amplified, It explains it. Seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the fig season had not yet come. That tree was all out of whack. But let me tell you the behind the scenes. <laughs> In the garden, what did Adam and his wife try to cover themselves with? Fig leaves. Fig leaves. So it was time to speak to a fig tree. So now let's read this. They came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple. There it is again. And began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught saying, is it not written? My house shall be called a... a of all nations, the house of prayer, you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw it how they might destroy him for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. When evening was come, he went out of the city. 
In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, from the roots, not the leaves. Those, those things, they're big trees, particularly in that part of the world. I, you know, just research it. Go to Google or, or Bing or DuckDuckGo or somebody. And uh, well, that's a search engine. And, uh, and just put it in there. They're huge. We see fig trees around here and, you know, some of them are not even bigger than that. But over there, they are huge, very, very old trees. As they passed by. Now, don't you know, now let's, let's, let's go back. Let's look at this again. Jesus entered to Jerusalem into the temple, looked around about upon all things, and now the evening tide was come, and he went out to Bethany. Why didn't he do anything? This is, this is very important. He just went in there and looked around. He needed to pray about this. He didn't do or say anything. He just observed. Never ever quick to accuse. Listen to the Lord. Listen to him. Go and pray. And then the next day he came in there and he knew what to do. So, now notice this. Now, don't you know Peter would look, looked at that tree when they walked past by there? <laughs> In the morning, 12 hours later, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig, look at that fig tree, which you cursed is withered away. Now, what happened to him? He spoke to it. What did he say? He, he spoke the end result. He didn't care what happened to it. Lightning could kill it. It could stand there from now on with leaves and no fruit. He just said it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter, forever. Nine words. And the disciples heard it. It was a far off. I mean, he let that tree have it. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed withered away. Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. <laughs> now, the cross reference there, I have a little two there, it says, or have the faith of God. Well, of course it's faith of God. But it's the same faith we have. It's the faith of God. It's the same thing, same faith. But now, this is the fundamental of faith. This is fundamentally what it is and how it works. He laid it all down. I want you to notice something in the 14th verse. Jesus answered that tree. <laughs> that tree was talking to him. So he answered that tree. That is a basic fundamental of faith. You talk back. That's right. You talk back to the news. I don't watch much of it. I have better news than that. But you need to talk back to it. Amen. So, 
the whole fundamental of faith starts in the book of Genesis. Hold your place there. And let's go there once more. Page one. In the beginning, God. Well, now there you are. He's always been. Now, our little miniature brains <laughs> can have a hard time with that. We can't think. No, not even no, but just, just don't even try to go there. No, <laughs> it doesn't work. Where did he come from? He didn't. <laughs> I'm going to ask him that first time. <laughs> We'll know. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now here's the fundamental of faith right here. Right here. The spirit of God was moving. He is always moving. He's moving in here tonight. He's moving all over this planet. He came here full time on the day of Pentecost. All of the angels. You remember Jacob's ladder? That's over. Hebrews, the first chapter says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth? All ministering, all of them, all of those angels that have assignments in the earth. I am totally, absolutely convinced that when they all came back into this atmosphere, it didn't say it was a rushing wind. It said it was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And I, I, I believe you could have heard that all over this planet. When they all came back into this atmosphere at the same time. Glory to God. Amen. But here it is. The Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters and God said, yes. light be. So yeah. the spirit of God is moving, but without faith being released with the mouth, nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing happens. That's a fundamental of faith. Now, Jesus laid it out right here. He answered that fig tree then they answered him about it. Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Kenneth Hagin just went from his, his, the parsonage over to the sanctuary and he just lay down on his back and read the whole book of Mark because it was Mark, it was th these verses right here are what got him off the bed of affliction. And the Lord said to him in his spirit, he said, did you ever notice that I used say three times and believing only once? Well, that's what I just did right then. He said, my people are not having a problem with the believing, it's the saying part. And I, how many times do you suppose in 55 years I've had people come up and talk to me about that? Well, Brother Copeland, I mean, I tried that. I tried that. It just doesn't work for me. It just did. It's the saying part. It's the saying part. Well, I just can't support the word of faith any longer. Why? Why? There's a, I know, this, this is a true story, not too long ago. <clears throat> well, 
I really don't, I, I really don't think it matters what we say. How did you get saved? You believed it in your heart and said it with your mouth. Fig tree. Now you listen to me. Look at that. It's nine words. Verily I say unto you, whosoever say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. Mountains are bigger than trees. <laughs> well, fig tree, now you listen to me. You listen to me. I'm going to curse you. I'm working it up. I'm working up my faith here. Now, wait, now, wait a minute. No. Oh, God, help me. I got, God, help me. Help. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that fig tree, but I said, oh, you, wait a minute. What am I, what am I supposed to say? Hey, fig tree. Die! Come on. Fig tree. Are you listening to me? No. <laughs> Why? Zero faith. What did Jesus do? Read it again. He spoke to it and turned around and headed to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He didn't care what happened to it. He just spoke the end result. Amen. We could have come out there the next day and it had it, it ceased to exist. Right, right. He didn't care because he had faith in God, he answered that tree and that tree had had it. It was over. So what do we need to do? We need to speak to the fig tree. We need to speak to the mountain. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are finished. You are through. Goodbye. The Lord started talking to me years ago about very positive negatives. Well, I'll tell you one thing, glory to God forever. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'll tell you, I'm just a boss over him. Satan, you go in the name of Jesus. Now you understand me, I told you to go. The Bible says to resist you and you'll flee. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. It said, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. That's a whole different thing. No, the devil didn't go anywhere. <laughs> the commandment of the church to love one another However, you go over to 1 John and he says it's in two parts. Believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. And believe the love. You've known the love, now believe it. And I saw that one day and I, I looked at that. Uh, you've known the love and believe the love that he has one. Well, when did we know the love? The moment we were born again because we moved from death unto life and we love the brethren. But then believing the love, we have to do what the Bible says. Yep. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, 
supplications, prayers, intercessions, and givings of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all man to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Yes. Kings and all that are in authority. Amen. Whoever they are. I heard a man say, well, I can't pray for the man, I can pray for the office. Oh, well, get off. I don't care who's in there from that standpoint. That's what I pray. First of all, amen. amen. And then you begin to pray, Father, your will be done in these offices. Yes. 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 You know who's supposed to be there. Yes. Yes. Your will be done. Then you get results. That's it. But that's where we are. This is still the United States yes. of America. Yes. It still is. Yes, and it will be. Yes. It will be until the catching away of the church, however that's long right. that is. Yes. But faith in God. It's the answer. It's all over the Bible. You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org slash notes. We put our brains to work, creativity to work, our hands to work, equipment to work, and tools to work. Trusting in the ability of each component to engage and get the job done. Are you putting your faith to work? As believers, we have access to everything God has because faith in God, activated by the Word, will work. With Kenneth Copeland's teaching, How to Put Your Faith to Work, you'll learn exactly that. These six messages on USB drive can be plugged in and played from a computer, in your car, or even downloaded onto your mobile device. Simply plug it in and follow the instructions in the case and you'll be able to listen to all six messages wherever you are. Understand how to engage your faith and put it to work. Use your faith like a mechanic uses a tool and begin a life of faith that works for you. Put your faith to work today. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's teaching, How to Put Your Faith to Work. This MP3 audio series is available now on USB Drive. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Also available as a digital download. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Pastor George Pearsons. Everyone wants to be loved and accepted. There's a desire to feel like you belong and have purpose in life. For some, it's time to come home to Father's house. There, you're welcome with open arms and you are loved unconditionally. It's as simple as making the decision. What decision is that? To ask Jesus into your heart and to make Him the Lord and the Savior of your life. Pray this very simple prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life and do something with it, and I will serve you all of my days. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit 
and I will speak in other tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. You're born again. Welcome home. And you are home where you belong. In Jesus, you have victory status over all of the curse. The blessing of the Lord is now your way of life. Ephesians 2.10, what a great scripture. It gives us insight into who we are in Christ. You are God's workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, to do those good works which God prepared ahead of time and to walk in the good life that He's prearranged for you. Take that promise by faith and know with confidence that you are called and accepted by God and you can live the good life that He's planned for you. KCM has some free resources to help you learn more about this new life. It includes a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And then there are also two brochures that'll help you start reading your Bible and learning how to grow spiritually. Request your free package today on kcm.org. And if you need prayer for anything, call our prayer line. You can also share your testimony. And if you got saved, let us know. We want to rejoice with you because the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of what you just did. Well, thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you again tomorrow. This is Pastor George reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. If you received Jesus into your heart and made Him the Lord and Savior of your life, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to welcome you to the family of God. They have a gift for you called the Salvation Package to help you understand more about your new life in Christ. Receive your free package on kcm.org salvation. Find something life-giving on kcm.org, your study center for victory. View the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts on demand and study along with the daily broadcast notes. Or download the audio podcasts to listen on the go. Watch prior KCM events for hours with truth going in your eyes and ears wherever you are. Get real help for real life problems. Follow our guide to believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply your way to results from your couch, desk, or kitchen table. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith every day. Read interactive BVOV magazines and click to unlock more content in each issue. Get a faith boost from testimonies of real life success from people just like you. Find information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Read archives of Kenneth Copeland's partner letter and download free books from our bonus library. Over 50 titles available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are.